unfortunately, I see a lot of folks um, doing it the opposite way. And that's why I make fun of those LinkedIn influencers <laughs> who post um, something mind boggling about a new attention layer or something. And, and it's like, so what, you know, um, I work in a fortune 1000 company. I want to, I don't know, classify documents or, uh, or build a customer support chatbot. Why do I care? Why do I care about flash attention Two and VLLM? What's the point, you know? Um, and these are great, by the way, uh, these are useful and there are plenty more, but you have to turn it uh, on its head and say, okay, uh, what's the problem we have? Why would we even need faster attention layers and and and, and faster inference servers, etc.? You know, what's what's the problem there? And then take it from there, dive deep, and um, but never lose track of the original problem you're trying to solve. Otherwise, yeah, yeah you're feeding your curiosity <laughs> and you're you know you're you're feeding your brain, but um, something needs to come out for for customers in in plain English, and uh, and that's my yeah. obsession. Hi friends, and welcome to this very exciting episode of Leading with Data. Today I have with me Julian Simon, and Julian is an evangelist at Hugging Face. He has been an evangelist at AWS before, someone who is very passionate about community, open source, and I think uh, it's, it's going to be so much fun about talking to Julian and then uh, learning from him about uh, you know his experiences and uh, how to build community. So looking forward to the discussion, and Julian, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to you. Great. So, uh, uh, Julian, let me you know uh, uh, start uh, the discussion with uh, what you mentioned on your uh, you know LinkedIn that you are an engineer at heart, <laughs> and and you know you you spend quite a bit of time with various CTOs with evangelizing analytics, AI, ML solutions, a building community. Uh, so, uh, so can you, in your own words, uh, uh, explain the journey and then, you know, how you kind of uh, uh, ended up in this role? What were early days for you? So, so what's your story in your words? Uh, it's a long story. So I, I'll try to, you know, keep it short and, and entertaining. So I, honestly, I, I, I'm the, you know, uh, I'm the poster child for the uh, you know the kid who got a computer really early on, a century mm -hmm. ago literally, and um, and I wasn't even in high school yet, and um, mm -hmm. and I, it, within an hour or two I knew this was it for me, you know, um, that wow. that was my mm -hmm. uh, my love, my passion, my uh, my career eventually. Um, and, and it's just, uh, you know, at the, at, at the root of this, it's just curiosity, you know, trying to understand how things work. And I mm -hmm. always thought computers are the, uh, I guess, the most complex machine out there, the most complex device um, mm -hmm. that the human mind has, uh, has ever built. And, uh, and even a century ago, they were already quite complicated <laughs> and interesting to, uh, to a young, uh, you know, a young boy. And uh, well, they certainly got better <laughs> and <laughs> overcomplicated um, in the yeah. following decades, and that's what drives me. You know, at the end of the day, I, I love to uh, I love to learn new things, and mm -hmm. um, and with AI, there's certainly no shortage of that. Uh, you yeah. know, from AI to our hardware to frameworks to to APIs to cloud services, there, there's just a never a never ending list of things you can learn. So. You know, you have to focus, but mm -hmm. uh, I guess I found, you know, I found my uh, my niche, so to speak. Uh, I've been uh, I've been working on uh, on deep learning since uh, uh, well late 2015, I think. So it's been a few wow. years. You know, time flies, <laughs> and uh, and I, you know, I don't have any background in uh, in in AI and machine learning. I'm a I'm a software engineer. That's uh, well, I, I guess electrical engineering and uh, software engineering because because a century ago you had to do electrical engineering before you could do software right uh, what, a, what, a, yeah. what a waste of time <laughs> no offense to uh to electrical engineers out there uh yeah. but it was a bit of a waste to me and um mm -hmm. 
and and it's um, you know it's it's where I come from. So over time, I I, um, I worked with uh, you know internet platforms as a as a CTO and VP engineering in different startups. And data was always in the picture, you know, uh, mm-hmm. whatever you run, whatever platform you run, whatever uh, uh, industry you're in, at internet, in the internet age, there's going to be databases and there's going to be structured data and unstructured data. And and then, you know, big data shows up and, well, let's mm-hmm. learn big data and try to th- build something <laughs> with it. And then machine learning pops up. It's like, well, yeah, maybe we could do machine learning and then deep learning pops up and well what is this thing yeah. and um mm-hmm. and now transformer models and generative models so i think that's that's really um that's really what i love doing and hopefully i can do this for uh for some more time and keep my brain you know active and mm-hmm. and very busy and in a nutshell you know the the evangelist role or i developer relations role um is really about it's it's an interesting career because in my opinion it's about getting paid to learn stuff getting yeah. paid to sit at this computer <laughs> for <laughs> hours and days and weeks banging my head uh mm-hmm. virtually of course uh yeah. on the on the keyboard and the screen trying to understand those novel techniques and and really understand them not just oh, okay i run hello world and or i run a blog and you know that, that's fine i mean again n- nothing wrong with that but if if i'm going to explain it to to developers and customers and enterprise users and you know ctos etc and i need a very very deep understanding of the tech and so yeah. anytime you see one of my videos on youtube or um uh, which is, I guess, my main focus. I've been writing a little less these days. I should go back to that. But um, mm-hmm. those 30, 40 minute videos are sometimes weeks, full time weeks of just me trying to figure things out. So maybe I'm just slow or maybe I'm just mm-hmm. obsessing over details, but that's what it is. Um, that's yeah. what this job is. And joining AWS as a tech evangelist years ago and now uh, joining Hogging Face uh, two, uh, two and a half years ago as chief evangelist, is is a is that same um, uh, I guess you know thread of me learning stuff, um, being patient, uh, overcoming my frustration <laughs> of not understanding. So if you think mm-hmm. it's it everything comes easy to me, sometimes people tell me that it's like oh you make it sound easy. Well yes, thank you because I, I I work very very hard at making oh, it sound easy. But believe me, nothing is yeah. easy. Okay, I am the worst learner tester developer um i'm the worst anything at, at, at everything which makes me a perfect person to hit every single problem write them on a piece of paper and then write the answer hopefully that i find to the problem and then put everything together and explain it to everybody out there uh, whether in person or uh, or online so that's really what the job is so it's mm-hmm. it's a it is it is an oddball, I have to say. It is an oddball job, but it works for me. You know, uh, the 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 older kid still you know wanting to learn, getting paid for that, and uh, and then generally trying to be helpful and uh, wasting a lot of time so that you don't have to. Uh, that's really yeah. what the job is about. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are there is uh, uh, so much uh, you know interesting threads from there. So let me start. So, So one of the things which, you know, uh, even uh, when I reflect back on, you know, our journey or or anyone who has been successful has been that trait of, as you mentioned, that, you know, machine learning popped up and then deep learning popped up and then uh, more recently transformers and generative AI. And uh, personally, I felt that, you know, being in the community and uh, you you, uh, essentially have a bit of advantage to see what is, you know, trending, what, what is gaining a lot of attention uh but for you how does that work so how uh, on one side you know how do you keep yourself up to speed with what is happening and then you know uh, uh, do you feel that your uh, evangelism role kind of anyway puts you uh, out there in middle of uh, uh, yeah it's it's a good question it's actually um i think it's actually one of the harder things because you know sitting and learning stuff, um, I mean, yeah, I'm used to it. You know, I've learned and I guess forgotten so many things over time. My, my, my brain is 
you know, plastic enough to, 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 to do that uh, and keep doing that for a while. But the bigger question is what should I be focusing on? And, um, and it's very tempting to keep chasing the latest, uh, the latest trend. I mean, yeah. just open your LinkedIn feed, right? Um, <laughs> do it now, you know, all of yeah. you watching and listening to this, <laughs> do it now. You, you'll probably see, you know, 10 different posts of 10 different people um, claiming whatever model is the best, whatever training technique is the best, uh, whatever open source project is the best, uh, blah, 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 blah. And yeah. again, there is nothing wrong with that, you know. Um, hopefully those folks know a little bit what they're talking about, which is a, a completely different problem. But anyway, <laughs> so you see those 10 things um, and, yeah. and, uh, and which one do you actually invest time and energy into, right? Um, because you could be chasing, you know, you could be spending two hours a day reading advanced research papers, but is that what, is helping you, you know, um, progress as an individual. And I guess more importantly, is this what your organization or whatever business you're working for, um, is that what they need, you know? So l focusing on things that move the needle in terms of business value, which has always been my focus. And when I say business value, I don't necessarily mean commercial stuff. Uh, I mean, if you're a, if you work for an education organization, then well, I guess business value means uh, improving um, student outcomes. And if you work for a, a, a hospital or a medical organization, it means uh, improving uh, patient outcomes, right? So it doesn't have to be dollar, you know, generating <laughs> dollars uh, or yeah. any other currency. It's really about solving business problems, okay? And and all the bleeding edge techniques uh, are interesting. Um, and I'd love to be able to read them all um, and try them all, but that's not really where customers are. You know, I spend most of my time uh, when I'm not learning stuff. I'm spending most of my time with uh, with enterprise customers and and you know sometimes public sector customers. Mm -hmm. And and the problems they have are real are real life problems. You know, they're yeah. they're not moonshot projects. They're not you know trying to. Uh, um, to, to, to build the craziest, most advanced project in the world, they have real life problems to solve. And so you need to find the right set of tools and techniques that will help them do that uh, in a reasonable time frame with minimal risk, reasonable cost, etc. So you can't just pull the latest preprint from archive saying, oh, look at this. Uh, uh, Meta did this, or or Google did that, or Microsoft PhDs did this. It's like, well, we don't understand any of it, and uh, it's not really applicable to what we do anyway. Um, so thank you, but no thank you, right? And um, and so that's that's where I, I I focus on. You know, I I I keep an eye on the on the bleeding edge stuff, but mm -hmm. I I focus most of my time on what's actionable and usable by real life practitioners today. And and how do you do that? So do you kind of constantly reference to the problems you have come across, or is there a yeah. framework of sorts which you have built? Yeah. <laughs> well, there is so, this, like the crux of uh, where, where well, people should be focused. If you're if you've been around for a while, which I guess is certainly me, uh, you 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 get a sense of yeah, this is a really cool thing. But um, you know, first of all. Is it, is it even available in an open source library, right? Is yeah. it purely research? And, you know, congrats to whoever wrote the paper. You know, I, I, I understand half of it and I skip the math and everything. But it's like, yeah, this is really good, but I, it's not available anywhere. So it's pure research. Um, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work for me and, 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 and our customers. If it's already something that's implemented you know if it's a new model or if it's a new training technique and you know the the transformers library supports it or, or pytorch supports it um okay then i, I guess I, I i will you know if it's something that a reasonable uh, you know data science team could start looking at and, and test in a matter of hours then okay may, maybe i'll take a look but more than anything again yes uh, I, I will start from what customers are asking 
uh, you know, I spent six years at Amazon, so, so <laughs> at AWS specifically. Yeah. So uh, working backwards and uh, and customer obsession are uh, are still uh, very very strong things for me, and uh, and I, I believe there's a ton of value in just shutting up listening to pain points from real life people in industries you know nothing about and uh, and trying to help them out and um, and and most of the time you know they're not looking for another uh, another uh, deep learning optimizer or uh, or another uh, insanely complicated distributed training technique um, they they're you know they have uh, they have more pragmatic uh, down to earth questions um, but if you solve those, then they're on their way to creating business value and be successful. So it, it's a balance between just going crazy with engineering and research and, you know, feeding, feeding my hunger and my curiosity with the bleeding edge stuff. Um, and then trying to be a little more reasonable, a little more pragmatic, say, yeah, okay, don't spend too much time on this because you won't get that question for another six months, maybe. Uh, mm-hmm. but instead, why don't you go and, and, and dive into i don't know data cleaning or <laughs> or uh i don't know you know cost optimization or something because that's really what the what what people want to do right now yeah and then once you have zeroed in on let's say some of the topics which you feel are relevant for the customers uh you uh you uh, i'm presuming you spend time on distilling them through because you mentioned that you you spend a lot of time kind of simplifying those and then uh, i see you obviously post it on medium create videos and and during this process right if you have to uh, put the level of clarity which you yourself get right so so let's say when you saw it on linkedin it was zero and when you ended with the process it was let's say 100 how does that happen and then how what does that process look like so i always try regardless of how much i may already know um i always try to approach any new tech any new thing i'm investigating as uh, i would say a vanilla customer right Mm -hmm. um so you know i'm trying to shut down part of my brain and part of my memory because initially um i want to i want to take a look at this thing um with a fresh set of eyes and uh and definitely not as in. somebody who's been who's been you know obsessing about deep learning for the last seven eight years and um and so initially i am really playing you know the I mean, joe user and uh, and and mm-hmm. copying and pasting from the from the hello world example and just not trying to second guess anything and uh, and say okay let's run the hello world thing okay no that's this is ru- if it's not running then uh, that's something wrong but sometimes it's mm-hmm. it's not running um and 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 just start from there and then read the docs um read more examples um absolutely not jump to the github repo and start reading code you know um most of the time i do that too uh but later mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> i really want to understand at some point you know I, I think i have this mental model on how this works um and i want to validate my assumptions by reading code and i i go i go and do that and um uh, just to get a little ahead of anybody else because I probably won't get those questions, but knowing a little more is going to help me um, answer everything else with more clarity and, and more uh, uh, certainty, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I never like to say, oh, I think it works that way, or I, I suppose it works that way, or maybe it works that way. I, I, you know, I want to know. I want to know yeah. how it works. And then, okay, mm-hmm. if I get that question, then I know. If I don't, I can use some of the low-level details to better answer the question in, in, in plain English. So I think it's, um, again, it's trying to stay in sync with uh, with customers and what they need right now and how much they need about it, mm-hmm. uh, how, how much depth, um, and, um, and work in layers, right? And if you look at my content, uh, generally, I mean, some of it can be, 
you know, beginner friendly, and I'll make it clear, you know, if you're completely new to this, then great, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Some stuff will be, you know, like deep dives, and uh, and that's definitely a few layers down. And and sometimes I go hardcore, and I'll just say it. it's like, well, if if this is the first time you watch anything or read anything about this, this isn't the, the one for you. Um, mm -hmm. So I think you you need to understand, you know, you need to understand the, the problems at different level. You know, what does that? What's the purpose? You know, what kind of business problem uh, is this helping solve? Uh, what are the use cases? What's the developer experience like? What's the cost like? What's the performance like? You know, the initial questions that that would help you, uh, I would say, uh, shortlist technologies or models or whatever. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then once you understand that, yes, this is working in this case and not in that case, and then this is how I would use it. Okay, once you figure that out, which is really 90% of what customers will want to know, then you can spend more time diving deeper. But uh, but unfortunately, I see a lot of folks um, doing it the opposite way. And that's why I make fun of those LinkedIn influencers <laughs> who post um, something mind boggling about a new attention layer or something. And and it's like, so what? You know, um, I work in a Fortune 1000 company. I want to, I don't know, classify documents or uh, or build a customer support chatbot. Why do I care? Why do I care about Flash Intention 2 and VLLM? What's the point, you know? Um, and these are great, by the way. Uh, these are useful and there are plenty more, but you have to turn it uh, on its head and say, okay, uh, what's the problem we have? Why would we even need faster attention layers and and, and, and faster inference servers, et cetera? You know, what's, what's the problem there? And then take it from there, dive deep and, um, but never lose track of the original problem you're trying to solve. Otherwise, yeah, yeah you're feeding your curiosity <laughs> and you're, you know, you're you're feeding your brain. But um, something needs to come out for for customers in in plain English, and uh, and that's my yeah. obsession. And yeah, I think the other challenge which happens is you you don't realize when you have moved from feeding your curiosity to feeding your dopamine kicks and then you yeah. <laughs> end up in, in just scrolling more and more information yeah uh, and it's but, a good point and you know i think yeah. the uh, the the job satisfaction the danger for somebody in my like me or folks in 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 similar roles the danger is going all in on personal satisfaction and then you know building content or going on stage basically showing off saying look how cool i am look how smart i am look how much i know blah 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 and life coding and blah 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 you know and and that's the, that's the huge risk um and i think you need to shift the job satisfaction to getting in person feedback or or online feedback or you know email saying I watch this or YouTube comments, which I, I love, and I, I try to, under, to um, answer as many as I can. Folks telling me, oh, wow, you know, I've been trying to understand this for six months. Uh, I watch your video. I got it. And thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I never saw it uh, better explain or, you know, something like this. You know, it doesn't happen all the time, but yeah. it does happen from time to time. Mm -hmm. and, and that's me. That's my dopamine kick. It's like, OK, I hit the spot. You know, I, 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 I put in plain English something that's amazingly complex and i tied it to business problems that folks have in real life that's it you know that's the that's the bullseye for me um mm -hmm. so you need to be aware of that and, and understand what people expect from you and and what will make them happy and focus on that yeah and uh, in this uh, process have you started using any of the generative AI tools to accelerate your own research <laughs> and your own <laughs> shortlisting? Um, so I don't use any of it for my writing mm -hmm. uh, because I think it's, um, uh, you know, generating stuff and just copying and pasting into a blog post or something is, uh, is just yeah. plain wrong. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of the day, uh, I think it, um, you know, I think my domain knowledge and my style are uh, what make me, uh, uh, what makes me successful. 
Yeah. And uh, if I if I just you know take a shortcut and 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 copy paste whatever um, whatever LLM spits out on a particular domain, even if it's if it's a, a, a factually correct answer, um, it, it's too bland. You know, it's too bland. Yeah. It's it's generic, and uh, and I think if people like my content or don't like my content, it's because of that. It's because of what I learned in the in the last years and how I. You know who I am and how yeah. I, uh, mm -hmm. you know, tell it like it is and and <laughs> make funny jokes or not so funny jokes or or use strong words sometimes and yeah. that's it. You know, you like it or you don't, and it's like it's like a journalist. It's like any anyone else, right? You 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 feel a connection to that person. So, using yeah. using models, using uh, yeah AI for that doesn't doesn't really work. Um, sometimes you know I will for particular when I struggle with. Uh, when I struggle with a particular sentence, you know, I'm not quite sure it sounds okay. Yes, maybe I'll just say, can you simplify this? Can you make it sound more, you know, blah, 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 but just a tiny bit. And um, and and generally I use, you know, and you have to trust me on this. I use Hugging Chat for that, uh, our own uh, our <laughs> own chatbot. So go check it out, hugging.chat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have the latest right, models and, uh, and, uh, and they're amazing. But yeah, so that's that's really what I um, that's really what I use, um, and um, I guess I'm too old-fashioned. You know, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a I'm a craftsman in a way. Um, yeah. And um, and I think yeah, I, I think my my the way I work is is you know very personal, very I would say very lonely in a way, and. Um, and until you know, it needs to be the screen and and me, and 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 time and coffee or tea, and mm -hmm. then you know, then it clicks. Um, and yeah. uh, and once it clicks, writing is very fast for me. Uh, I I never had any problem with writing, so mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think I need a lot of assistance. I just need time to figure things out, time and quiet. Interesting. <laughs> no, interesting. And then yeah, completely agree that the. Uh, the outcome which comes from you know your own fashion involvement yeah. and, and uh, it's the very creation valuable. process i think that's that's the uh, uh so uh, you know uh, shifting the gears uh, a bit so uh, you you obviously spend a ton of time with different customers their mm -hmm. problems uh, you you are on a usually very hectic travel schedule as well uh, <laughs> yes it was difficult to schedule this and i, I forgot to apologize but uh, yeah it, we, we made it <laughs> yeah we made it uh, and along with that you know on, on a macro level there is so much action happening on generative ai there is so much buzz there is so many discussions happening right so so uh, when you step back and filter out this uh, uh, almost manical activity which has been going around what are some of the key trends key things which you observe and, and how do you see this entire development over the last uh, year year and a half yeah so i think the first um you know if we look at 20 if we look back at 2023 the the first quarter was really um, about experimenting and, and just understanding what uh, generative AI and LLMs could do and could mean in your organization, right? So, yeah. and the cool thing is, it wasn't only, uh, I would say, engineers, it was literally anybody, right? Mm -hmm. Your HR manager, your uh, marketing manager, your finance manager could go and ask stuff to uh, chat GPT and and see how well or how bad it would do. And 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 by the way, could we use this in our uh, in our internal workflows, etc., and business processes? So very good. And then in Q2, um, we started seeing the first wave of um, open source LLMs, right? Uh, you know, Llama, Alpaca, uh, yeah. or Ko Koala, <laughs> all the all the yeah. animals starting <laughs> showing right. up. And I think it was the first sign that okay, maybe there's a maybe there's a choice here. Uh, it's not just OpenAI. Um, mm -hmm. We're starting to see the open source community and, and research community, uh, you know, to figuring things out, training models, building data sets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course, there were still a, 
a pretty large gap. And um, and then, you know, during the summer, uh, Lama 2 came out from Meta. Lama 2 and then Falcon. And, yeah, and then very quickly Falcon. And those two, I think, were the, the, the wake-up call that uh, um, open source LLMs are very serious contenders. And uh, even though the quality gap is still there, uh, it's closing very, very fast. And by by then, I think some some earlier adopter customers realized um, that they, they would run into issues with uh, um, open AI and, and other um, closed models in terms of uh, maybe compliance and certainly cost, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so they saw those first few great LLMs out there and, and um, and started experimenting. And I think Q3 and Q4 have just been insane in terms of acceleration. Uh, you know, the bigger Falcon and Mistral and uh, Mixtral yeah. and, and fine-tuned variants and uh, and it never stops, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think now, um, plus, you know, the open AI uh, shenanigans, um, <laughs> I, I think convinced everybody that, you know, you can't put all your eggs in the same basket. And mm -hmm. uh, and just like if you've been in tech long enough, you know there isn't one programming language to rule them all. Same for mm -hmm. databases, same for storage systems, same for networking equipment, same for everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, uh, and so why would you have a silver bullet for AI when we never saw that in tech in the last 50, 60 years? So just like every other field in technology, you'll have a panel of solutions and uh, closed models are um, a great solution for uh, for some use cases, um, you know, and I think the productivity side of things, you know, uh, to co-pilot everything uh, on, on the Google and, and Microsoft side is certainly, you know, valuable and, you know, I'll certainly be using it. Um, but then when you look at enterprise use cases where you want to create a competitive advantage through um, training models on your proprietary data and and then deploying them internally and and getting maximum ROI from from that uh, because again cost is everything uh, as a, as a lot of folks are now figuring out I think or have figured out mm -hmm. in the last few months um, then you'll probably turn to open source LLMs that you can, you know, fine tune and deploy and optimize and control and and, and secure. So, you know, it's a scope. You have a you have a whole spectrum. Uh, you have a whole spectrum of solutions, and um, and and it's a toolbox. And as as a practitioner, as a professional, you need to understand what those tools are for, and when to use what. You know, uh, when to use what. And um, and that's uh, that's great. Competition is great. Choice, customer choice is great. Uh, um, if anything, we need more, you know. And uh, and we're getting close to five hundred thousand models on the Hugging Face Hub. By the time you're watching this, maybe we've hit that crazy number. Um, and um, and I think that's fine because you'll find uh, you'll certainly find something that's close enough to your business problem. You can start experimenting real quick, and um, and, and you'll be on your way. So. Uh, so I think things are perception are, is more balanced now um, because of that, you know, experimentation cycle and and some di early disillusions uh, that uh, that happened last year on on mm -hmm. closed models. So yeah, very very interesting and um, and I think twenty twenty four is going to be is going to be even crazier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, just double clicking on this, let's say you know. Uh, I uh, represent a bank which has its own set of uh, data, uh, all the you know uh, historical data about customers, risks, etc. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm I'm having a discussion with you in terms of so how can we use generative AI for our use cases, and uh, it could be risk, it could be customer management. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you guide these customers and then what would be your framework to kind of help them think through uh, these challenges? So first, I would ask a lot of questions, making sure I understand the use case. Um, mm -hmm. 
because again, you know, there is no technology or model to rule them all. And, and, um, well, I guess over the years, you know, I learned a few things about use cases in finance or in, you know, manufacturing or, but I, I I know so little, you know, compared to you. And if you've been working in the bank for 10 years and well, you, you know, you know, everything there is to know, and I hardly know anything. So I, I need to understand what you're trying to build. What are the key uh, metrics that matter? Right. Mm-hmm. So compliance would certainly be very high on the list and non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. Um, um, domain adaptation would certainly be very important because banks like <laughs> other companies tend to have crazy jargon and uh, and internal policies and internal uh, um, knowledge that are could be quite different from one bank to the next. Um, and cost would certainly be important. So try to understand the use case, try to understand what matters to you, um, and then see if this is really a Gen AI problem or not. Um, (laughs) Because if we can downscale this to, uh, I would say, a traditional transformer problem, or maybe a a simpler machine learning problem, then perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. I keep saying the best the best AI is no AI at all. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. AI is complicated. AI is risky in some ways. AI is expensive if you do it wrong. So, if you can solve the same problem with a model that's 10x or a 50x smaller, um, great. Right. So, yeah. I I I, I want to make sure people are not jumping to conclusions, and and picking gen AI uh, because they're excited or because so ba- so much is happening these days that they think that's the, you know, the Swiss army knife uh, solution to, to their problem. So if it is, if it really is a gen AI problem, then, um, then of course we need to talk about um, model selection, um, which languages do you need to support? And, uh, and, you know, I travel a lot um, uh, and, you know, I'm not a, I'm not uh, a native speaker, so I'm very well aware uh, that mm-hmm. uh, English is uh, is not is not the the universal language, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, well, there are parts of the world who don't <clears throat> speak English, who don't want to speak English, and uh, that's totally fine. You know, that's how it should be. Yeah. So, um, so you need to find uh, you know models that support uh, the the local languages, and and you need to start experimenting. Right, and I, I I push customers to start experimenting as early as possible because, you know, AI is uh is still a very new topic. Well, generative AI is, and uh, mm-hmm. and everybody has an opinion, and and we shouldn't really care about opinions. We should care about facts, and we should take decisions based on, you know, data and uh, and and KPIs. So instead of you know, discussing things to death for weeks with, you know, governance committees and whatnot, please, please start experimenting as quickly as you can in your sandbox. You'll be safe. You know, there's no, uh, there's no, there's no risk in doing that. So start to figure out, okay, uh, with this, with these two, three LLMs that are shortlisted Mm -hmm. uh, and with this uh, initial uh, test set of prompts, what do the, what do the answers look like? You know, what do mm-hmm. I like? Why don't I like? Uh, and can I do some early prompt engineering to, you know, tweak the the output to get the right tone, to rate the, to get the right brevity, etc. And uh, and generally, how does the model behave on my domain? How does the how does the internal how does the model know in you know from from its training? How how much does it know about my domain? Is it knowledgeable about banking, um, or is it always saying stupid things so maybe that helps you shorten the list again and uh and mm-hmm. then you can start plugging in external sources of truth you know using technologies like a uh, retrieval augmented generation uh, which is very very easy to to prototype if you use let's say langchain as an orchestrator and a simple vector index you don't need a fancy vector database um or your uh, you know elastic search cluster whatever is already there right Mm-hmm. Start plugging your own knowledge and start, you know, again, start 
uh, learning uh, what of those, uh, what works, what doesn't work, and which one of those models would be a better fit. And then maybe at some point you select one and you go into fine tuning to make it even more relevant to your domain, et cetera, et cetera. But it is a super iterative process. Uh, you should be able to iterate in, in, within days or even hours if you can. And within a few weeks, you know, you should have a reasonable POC um, that, uh, that shows the promise of business value, right? Yeah. And then, okay, then you can pause and you can start looking at, um, um, so how do I make it even better? You know, keep iterating on it. And how do I, what are the boxes I need to tick? Who are the, uh, who are the folks I need to keep happy? Uh, in terms of compliance and cost mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. And that's a parallel track, but you should never stop experimenting, you know, experiment, yeah. experiment, experiment until you know enough about what you mm -hmm. like, what you don't like, what are some <clears throat> of the risks, how to mitigate them, et cetera. Then pause, launch the, you know, the compliance and security and cost management and ops topics, because you will need these to get to prod mm -hmm. and keep enough. iterating yeah. and improving the model. And at some point, you know, things align and and uh, and you'll <laughs> have a, a, a production ready solution, but you'll probably never stop iterating on it. So short version is, you know, experiment, 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 um, and uh, and and make sure this is a really, this is really a Gen AI problem. Yeah, yeah, that is uh, 100% true. And, you know, so, so I think uh, there are two, three things which you have, you know, uh, mentioned one, obviously, you know, make sure it's a generative AI problem and not one of the uh, classical ML problems. Yeah. And then you also uh, mentioned a trend which you see where, uh, you know, the open source is clearly, uh, you know, gaining a lot of momentum. Some of the pros of uh, being open source are uh, coming across and people are realizing that. Uh, Small models is, I think, another thing which you referred that uh, could be uh, interesting going forward. But uh, 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 specifically, when you now look forward in, let's say, next 12, 24 months, what are some of the things where you see a lot of development happening, a lot yeah. of action happening? What are some of the things you are looking forward to? So I think, um, I think we're, we're at the stage, I mean, we're, at the beginning of the year, you know, 2024, we're at the stage where um, I, I can say with a straight face that op the best open source LLMs are on par with the best closed models, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you think I'm I'm wrong, I mean, again, go to Hugging Chat, experiment with Mixtrol, which is one of the models we support you know, for the chatbot, yeah. and and tell me what you think. You know, um, feels to me this is this is as good as, as anything else. So now we need, we need to leave them in the rear view mirror, right? Um, <laughs> I'm not satisfied with uh, parity. Um, yeah, I, I, I really want uh, open source models to be the best, you know, and keep oh, outperforming, not only in terms of, I would say, business value and, 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 and you know, language quality, etc., but also in terms mm -hmm. of cost performance, you know, mm -hmm. um, because one thing that comes up a lot when I speak with enterprise customers is um, um, the, the nasty surprise they got when they moved their open AI POC to prod, right? And, uh, <laughs> the paper token thing is, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say it's deceiving. That's not the word I'm looking for. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'd, I'd rather say, it's easy to miscalculate how much this is going to cost at the end of the month, especially if you plug in, you know, RAG systems and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I think uh, I've met a lot of customers who've really been uh, bitten by this. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it's not a cheap shot at OpenAI. You know, they, they've done an amazing job. It's just that I think uh, a lot of folks didn't really understand how much this was going to cost in the end. And it was way too much yeah. for them and they had to pull the plug. So so cost is important and working with smaller uh, open source models will obviously help. You'll need less infrastructure to, to train them and serve them, etc. So we clearly have a, an advantage there. Um, another, uh, another thing uh, that is clearly happening now is uh, local inference. Um, 
and um, and that's a great solution to solve your uh, your inference costs, right? Because if you centralize your um, uh, if you centralize your um, your API um, your prediction API, it, let's say into the cloud, and serve all your traffic from there, of course you have to scale it, right? And that means more uh, more instances, more uh, and more cost. So mm -hmm. still a good way to do it, but for some use cases, um, um, I'm thinking maybe code generation. Mm -hmm. um, there should be uh, you know there should be a way to bring those models on on your laptop, local right? machines, yeah, and mm -hmm. on your local machine. And, uh, and again, that means smaller models, model optimization techniques like uh, quantization, etc. And mm -hmm. um, and of course the ability to run them on CPU uh, because you can't uh, you can't ask uh, um, folks to say oh well uh, you know yeah we'll we'll save you money on the <laughs> we'll save you money on the cloud cost but now you need to buy fancy GPUs to everybody and well they're not running on my laptop anyway so that's it um, so um, so we need uh, you know we need CPU optimization techniques and we've seen some very amazing progress there uh, Apple you know the Apple uh, silicon is uh, is great the M uh, M1 M2 M3 um, Intel, uh, who's one of our hardware partners, has done a lot of interesting work this year on their Sapphire Rapid CPU. AMD is coming next, and we're also partnering mm -hmm. with AMD. Uh, the the oh. Ryzen, uh, Ryzen AI chips are very interesting too. So I'm very hopeful for uh, for 2024 and where we can start running, you know, multi-billion uh, parameter LLMs with good quality, good performance completely locally i think this uh this will be a game changer for uh for a lot of scenarios and uh and and you know kind of solve the roi problem of uh, oh we have to host those big things and and scale them well we can make them smaller and we can distribute them to users and and the hosting cost so to speak becomes almost zero now so yeah there's a uh, model optimization is um uh, is one of my favorite topics uh, you know, I uh, because maybe I started with really tiny computers who had uh, just a few kilobytes of RAM, and uh, and <laughs> I, I think generally small is beautiful in tech. Um, so yeah. if we can shrink the models with the same uh, uh, business value and run them on on commodity CPUs, you know, I think that's a very exciting prospect. Yeah, yeah that is true. That is true. And. Uh... <clears throat> uh specifically you know talking about uh, these models uh, uh video is something still which is you know kind of very early in terms of uh, you know creating consistent outputs for longer duration so uh, if you have to put a, a time frame in terms of you know let's say a good open source model cracking that problem what would that be in, in uh, as mm. for you, and then again, so, I realize this could be very wrong, but just want to hear your views on that. Yeah, I think um, I think models. I think the pace of innovation on models is gonna is gonna keep accelerating um, for a while because uh, mm -hmm. because anyone who can really demonstrate, you know, like mixed troll is getting very very close to that, but um, you could argue it's a mixture of experts. It's still a, a bit, you know, a bit large, a bit complicated. Um, I, I think anyone who can actually claim that they they outperform the best closed models, you know, um, with uh, just a few billion parameters, um, would be would be great. And mm -hmm. uh, there's a strong incentive to do that. There's a strong incentive mm -hmm. to do that. Um, so, you know, a lot of models are still 7 billion, but um, there will be architecture uh, progress as well. Um, so now we see a lot of, again, we see a lot of work on uh, optimizing inference, right? Flash attention, yeah. page attention, et cetera, because the models are big and, and, and we want to be able to, uh, to serve them faster. Um, but I'm sure there uh, there will be some uh, more fundamental advances on you know evolving the transformer architecture, the attention layers during training, and mm -hmm. uh, and being just more you know a little more clever 
and maybe shrinking uh, models to, you know, six, five, four, um, and with the same level of quality, and then applying the model optimization techniques to quantize them, shrink them, et cetera, and, and, and run them on the, on local machines. So, um, so we'll see, I think, um, you know, it's funny how everybody, well, not everybody, but it's funny how some people think that's it, you know, like AI, okay, <laughs> solve. <That's it. laughs> and, um, yeah. and again, um, I mean, if you've been in tech long enough, nothing is ever solved, right? Why do we see new programming languages being successful? You know, um, not everything was written in C and not everything was written in C++ and not everything was written in Java and not everything will be written in Rust, you know, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think it's, um, there's always someone out there uh, with a better ID. And, uh, and I think m maybe for the first time, it is really a global competition uh, because now we have engineering talent and, and AI talent everywhere, right? You mentioned Falcon earlier. I mean, Falcon came out of Abu Dhabi, right? Which was, honestly, it was a surprise to me, you know? Um, I wasn't aware they were investing so much there. And, um, and of course, the language side of things require local talent, right? Um, I mean, India has quite a few languages. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to guess, but it, is it something like 15 or? <laughs> it's more than that, yeah. It's more than that, okay, yes. I keep forgetting the actual number, but there you go. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, you, can't, you can't expect, you know, U.S. West Coast people to be knowledgeable, motivated, uh, you know, on building that. Um, yeah. Maybe some of them are, but it's like, well, maybe we'll stick to English and, uh, and Spanish because, you know, it's right next door and it works for us, yeah. you know? <laughs> Fine. And if you're in Singapore, then uh, you want to, you know, you want to train on uh, on uh, Indonesians and the many variants and you want to train on Malaysian, et cetera, et cetera, right? Same. Correct. Same for Africa, yeah. same for everything. So, so we'll see, and along the way, you know, uh, folks are clever. Folks can, uh, folks can learn anywhere now. Uh, anyone can watch the same uh, YouTube, the same conferences on YouTube, and can, can watch the same great MOOCs from Stanford or or whoever. You know, so you can learn anywhere. Uh, people are clever everywhere, um, and um, and we'll see. You know, we'll see innovation everywhere at a global scale, which I think is quite new. Software, you know, has always been. Well, has long been mostly, I would say, U.S. centric. Um, now it's it's really different, and um, and so yeah, I think everybody has an incentive to to be clever and uh, and and uh, and deliver breakthroughs. So it should continue for a long time. Yeah, that is definitely. Uh, uh, I think how it it uh, should pan out, and then uh, some of the you know local work which you mentioned, so people working on. For example, uh, there are a few startups focusing on yes, Hindi yes. as a language, and uh, uh, they're doing some phenomenal work. So, uh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. The, the, I was very happy in the last few months to see a lot of uh, local uh, or regional LLMs. You know, there was one from uh, for uh, um, uh, Scandinavian languages, and uh, you know, AI Singapore uh, in Singapore, and we've been working yeah. with them, helping them. <laughs> Have built uh, the the Sea Lion model, uh, which is a, an, a a model for Asian uh, languages, and they did publish the smaller ones on Hugging Face, and the bigger ones are coming. <laughs> so that that's awesome, and uh, we need that, and uh, and and we need those models and to uh, build applications uh, for local users, right? Uh, and that yeah. that. Um, those smart apps, um, we need to bring them to the people, right? So anyone with a smartphone um, on, on the streets of Bangalore or the street of uh, Jakarta of the, or the streets of uh, um, uh, any country anywhere should be able to get good quality, I don't know, public service or, or healthcare advice or, or, or educa personalized education or et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, and that can uh, through AI models, and that can only happen if those models understand the local language and the local uh, 
the local culture as well. So yeah. very important to have that. Yeah, very fascinating. Uh, Julian, uh, towards the end of the show, we ask a few, you know, rapid fire question with uh, yeah, our guest. <laughs> and the idea is to just, uh, you know, get to know you better as a person. All so, right. Uh, fire away. Uh, yeah. So what's, what's a dream holiday for you? Oh, um I think being on holiday wherever it is 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 good enough. <laughs> is good enough. Uh there are I have a few countries, there are a few well, a few places I would I would absolutely mm-hmm. love to to go to. Uh I, I'm not gonna name them because uh, cause you know, every time I do that, people say, Well, yeah, that's nice, but you should really go check out <laughs> my okay. local place and it's better yeah. but yeah yeah some uh some pretty remote i generally i love the i i love the wilderness so uh mm-hmm. um yeah I, i'll i'll give you one so i think i would i would absolutely love to go to uh, the very very south of uh south america argentina chile etc um that's, that's a great. long flight antarctica would be awesome but uh it, mm-hmm. it it will take me a while to get there i don't think they have ai conferences so i'll have to go on my own <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. And uh, you know, you mentioned uh, your process of creation, where you tend to kind of be by yourself, coffee, uh, music. So, uh, uh, you know, can you can you elaborate a bit more on that? What does that look like? How do you set up that environment for yourself? Uh, when I build content, you mean? Um, yeah, it's. I, I, you know, I try to block um, in in my agenda. That's that's difficult, but I try to block full weeks um, wow. because, yeah, I try to block a full week. Um, so that's difficult because it means I have to can't to not attend meetings. So well, sometimes that's a good thing, but <laughs> uh, but it means you know I can't really be traveling and uh, and I'll just have a, a laundry list of maybe I don't know. Well, it's not a laundry list. It's it's a short list of two, three things I want to understand by the end of the week, mm-hmm. and then um, and and then you know I try to fight for that precious time as much as I can. Try not to be uh, defocused, and um, and just immerse myself, like I said, in reading docs, reading docs, reading uh, uh, code samples. And uh, and starting writing code myself and hacking it and figuring it out mm-hmm. and writing down every single question I have. So generally, by the first day, I haven't achieved anything except I have you know sixty five questions I want to un- <laughs> to answer. Uh, and then it takes me the rest of the week to hopefully go through the list. Um, the list. But yeah, mm-hmm. isolation is uh, yeah. isolation is important to me. Uh, when I'm traveling a lot, when I'm on the road, I find it difficult to do, you know, very deep content. Sometimes I'll do quick videos just for because I'm bored somewhere in a in a hotel, <laughs> um, and uh, and why not? But uh, the the really deep stuff can only happen when I'm uh, when I'm home with my music and my uh, and my coffee, um, <laughs> and uh, and not hopefully not too much noise around me. Great. And and uh, what is your favorite, uh, you know? Past time when you're on a flight. Um, what do I do? What do I do on a flight? Um, so I, I honestly I try to get some sleep, but um, I'm the worst. I try. I mean, jet lag is killing me. Uh, you know, I'm the guy <laughs> that that steps off the plane looking 15 years older. Uh, for a week, uh, and still having to, you know, deliver. Uh, yeah. I, so, if you ask me for my cure, uh, I have none. I, I tried everything and nothing works for me. But I do try to sleep, but that's uh, a bit of a lost cause. So most of the time, I'll uh, I'll I'll read. You know, I've seen the movies ten all the movies ten times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes yeah. honestly, sometimes I'm on a first name basis with uh, some of the flight attendants on Air France, and like, oh, oh, you wow. again? And like, well, yes. <laughs> so uh, you know, I I already know what the menu is going to be, and I already know what the movies are going to be. So I, I I'm, I'm, so yeah, reading. Um, 
reading some you know uh, something you know light i was gonna say lightweight and then i was gonna mention uh, you know lovecraft books but uh, not really lightweight but yeah fa- I, I i love fantasy i, I love fantasy and uh you know, I can read, uh, you know, the Lord of the Rings 90 more times and, and still discover things. Okay. And it's a big book. So if I, even if I'm flying to the other side of the world, I, I won't get through it. So, yeah, I've got a few books that I, I carry and, and, and read. And, yeah, I think that's uh, uh, that's the best for me. Great. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Julian, for sharing those insights <laughs> and, you know, fascinating stories. Uh, uh, you know, ton of learning. And then thanks a lot sure. for, you know, sharing those. Well, thank you very much. It was always a pleasure to uh, to talk to you. And um, before you ask, I, I know I haven't been to India in a while. Um, <laughs> I think my last trip goes back to AWS. So that's, actually, yeah, that could be, it, it was pre-COVID for sure. So man, that's too many years. Um, you know, I'm, I'm dying to go. So uh, let's see if we can make this happen here. sometimes this year. And, uh, yeah. and hopefully I can spend enough time to... Uh, to meet a lot of you i know the the tech communities in india is amazing i've I've loved every single trip there and i learned a lot from from all of you as well it's a it's a fascinating country so hopefully i can be back in 2024 in person and enjoy the what i think is possibly the best food in the world (laughs) and that comes from a frenchman so (laughs) take it at face value (laughs) <laughs> no, no, I, <laughs> I'm sure we will, uh, you know, serve you the food <laughs> for your choice. Thanks, thanks a lot. Sure, uh, you're more than welcome. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you.